Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. What do you want to talk about first, the yen or crude? Let's talk the yen, man, because uh, crude's always fun. But, boy, this yen, I was talking to my dad yesterday, and uh, you've been on fire, man, with crude. But we're going to add the yen to this one, Teddy. This is quite a move we got going on, and it is not stopping right now. Let's talk the yen, man. Yeah, last week, and since we talked last, it blasted off. It finally Oof. broke out to the upside. I mean, last month it was weighing heavy. I mean, I was taking heat all month. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm surprised at how quickly in the past couple of days. I mean, right now we got up to, what is it? We're trading 134.08. I mean, this is a – I mean, it's a very impressive uh, – rally through resistance right now you know i mean 130 was a line in the sand with the japanese with the bank of japan and the uh, ministry of finance there and so far we haven't heard a word about anything and they were very adamant about defending their currency and now it's four dollars higher than that target line so it's very interesting i think it's gonna we're gonna see some pretty good corrections on this move but i believe that we're gonna keep trending higher as long as oil does oil is up you know it's pushing the 120 barrel a barrel a mark you know and i think I think yes. as long as it continues, as long as that trend remains forcibly breaking through resistance, this is what's going to happen with the U.S. dollar yen. It's the two are in tandem right now, especially as you're cutting you know, through these new highs. Do you see an area? I mean, it's so tough in terms of this. There's no area even over this right now, you know, but do you see an area that this thing maybe runs into resistance? I got to put this thing back on the chart going back to 1998, man. On I, my yeah, chart. I know. I, I was looking end. at that last weekend and I was like, Jesus, this thing hasn't been like trading like this with this kind of momentum in a very long time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I I think it's really going to keep on hammering its way higher. It just really is. There's no reason right now. Fundamentally, I mean, obviously, technicals are way over way overbought. So you, those are out the window, you know, sure. but the trend is your friend, you know, Oof. and like, I mean, you look at how it corrected in May. It had a nice correction off its highs, but that was just like a new basing, you know, for that. To, yes. I mean, to provide this new move up higher. Yeah. I mean, sometimes my dad will talk about it. You know, sometimes if you want to be a bull, man, a pullback is not a bad thing, just especially after you get a mm -hmm. run like that, where you trade in March from 114 almost to 130. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you pull back three or four dollars in the context of the run it just had. Maybe that's just enough breathing room for the next leg up. And this time that's what mm -hmm. happened. Um, mm -hmm. well, and to also gold. one thing, Go ahead. the third, sorry to interrupt you, but the third year is also one of the reasons why, because as oil is going up, 30 year prices are going down. That's another factor. It's really giving strength to the U S dollar, because if you look at the U S dollar versus the Euro and the pound and many other currencies they are relatively quiet today, but this, this it is very impactful on the yen right now because you have the oil trade and also the interest rate trade that are really driving this rally. Man, that market, you almost can't overstate. I was talking to my dad yesterday. I said, I said man, that thing looks strong. I know that's not good for gold, um, but mm -hmm. you can't deny it. it's it's that move. Um, jump into gold for a second because I know you're not a huge gold trader, but I was talking to my mm -hmm. dad. Um, gold, in my opinion, has held up pretty well in terms of what's happening in the yen. Usually, right, that mm -hmm. would be a real tough um, go around with the yen going from 114 to 134 over the mm -hmm. span of three months. Um, but over that time frame, from where the yen, the gold was, you had gold, yeah, it was up at 2078, but that thing was trading by March 16th at 1922, and we're only at 1855. I was playing with charts earlier. Uh -huh. I mean, if you have gold priced in yens, man, you are making some crazy coin. Right. Um, what do you see? Do you see anything? Do you look at that gold market at all, first of all? But what happens maybe if we do get eventually some kind of pause in terms of that yen? Could gold mm -hmm. really maybe find a bid if we start getting some weakness in some of those factors, maybe a reversal? And I'm talking, you know, maybe some months down mm -hmm. the line. But do, do you, what's your opinion on that one at all? Uh, well, I think that gold's kind of finding its, its stability range right now. I think that you, it definitely over time, I think it was, it's more of a bull than a bear. You know, I think that there's a lot of issues as we as the economies are starting to find, you know, with inflation and what have you, is there's slowdowns going on in manufacturing and other things like that. I think that's kind of putting a, a little bit of a str little strangle hold on, hold on uh, demand for gold, you know, because gold right now, it's that. On a manufacturing for industrial purposes, 
that's where the stranglehold is. We know there's a demand as far as like a hedge for inflation right now, obviously. You know, I mean, demand in India and China is very, very high for gold. That's not going to wane anytime soon, you know, but there's other other mechanisms that are being held back. And I think that's why you kind of have this range situation setting up. But I, I think the bull is there and it's going to continue to go higher, especially as inflation really starts to hit really bad over the next few months. So I would nice. think that in three, four months from now, you're going to see gold a lot higher than it is right now. Nice. Uh, so let's talk a little bit of crude. You referenced it a little bit with the yen, mm -hmm. but we're sitting right at about 120 bucks. It is remarkable, man. When I put up this chart, you have the now I have it on a weekly, Teddy, just real quick mm -hmm. going back three or four years to get the full move from covid. Uh, mm -hmm. The move really began, you could say, in November, right, when you're sitting at 66 bucks. But it almost looks, Teddy, like it began when this thing was at the doldrums in April. On my continuous, mm -hmm. I got it at six dollars and fifty cents. And like you say, almost in the end. Yeah, we have some pullbacks. But it's mm -hmm. been higher highs and higher lows the whole time. Just zooming in on this recent action, though, um, what's your kind of short term to medium term take on, on where we may see crude in the coming weeks or months as we go into, you know, summer driving and, and summer mm -hmm. trading as well? Well, you know what? The reality is the demand is there because, you know, it's kind of funny, like, obviously during the pandemic traffic and stuff like that died down i mean i'm in a very metropolitan area chicagoland you got over 10 million people living in you know this area um the driving habits of people definitely had changed during the pandemic people started coming back to the roads when things opened up but you saw a lot of like for instance rush hour it was from like 4 30 to 5 30 by 5 30 everywhere there really wasn't congestion up until recently. Now, mm -hmm. from now it's back to normal. Like we're talking about at one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, That's rush it. hour yeah. starting and yeah, driving times are just escalating. So demand for oil and people are moving, are going around. So that's going to help to drive this. You know, I mean, I think that's, this this rally is just I, I just don't see it stopping anytime soon. We have yeah. the only thing that we need now is for it to have some kind of major increase in supply that could possibly put a drag on this rally. But where is that going to come from? You know, so unless that factor gets uh, you know changes, I can't see how the momentum is not going to change because people may be making choices on what they're doing, but they're still moving around and more than they have been in two years. So yeah. I mean. It's the reality. I would agree, man. We One of my friends was talking about yesterday. He works uh, in downtown um, New York City, and I think he's in World Trade Center 1, and he was saying mm -hmm. that they have signs there now that they're 95% um, leased out in that biz in that in that building which um you know and he was That's saying we're back baby we're back as in just kind of what you're saying you know people are back mm -hmm. and i'm sure there's going to be variations depending where you are how many people are bat work and i know we're not back to pre-pandemic um mm -hmm. to that type of degree but that st statistic itself was kind of startling to me and you're talking about it in a city like chicago man people right. back on the roads well, Teddy, listen, I was telling my dad yesterday, I appreciate this segment you do, man. Looking at that yen yesterday, I really have a great understanding, more so than when I, you know, first started talking, man. I'm listening to this as well. We mm -hmm. appreciate it, Teddy. We'll talk to you next Sounds week, good. man. See you okay, next week. Thanks Take so care. much.